Uh, welcome back to Tutorial Tutorial. Uh, we are start the collection of beam, and uh, today we'll be looking at what relationship between slope, deflection, and radius of curvature. So we know that the beginning of most of these uh, proving that we have from double integration to Macaulay's method and uh, other things that we use in improving deflection of beam. Uh, as you can see here on this diagram, I've already drawn the beam that we are going to consider, which means we have points A and B. Understand it says that the beam has been bent into an arc, and I've already write wrote all the parameters here. But let me show you how we consider the case to be bent into an arc. Uh, if we consider, for example, if we have uh, a simply supported beam, let's say a simply supported beam with a point A and B point, like this one that I'm going to show you here. This is a simply supported beam with what with uh, loop W at mid point. If this beam is to be bent. It's going to be deformed into a shape like this. Don't forget that initially the beam was in a straight form, but it has been deformed into a shape like this. The reason is that uh, the effect or magnitude of the load is felt much near or at the center. It is not essentially at the center, but near or at the center. So, what we mean that in real life sense, you understand. That typically beam doesn't typically bend into a circular shape. What the reason is that the radius of curvature of, of at any point of this beam, maybe at point A, at point A, at point A, at point A, is the radius that touches the beam, understand, and has the same tangent with the beam. So if you are to look, if you are to take this thing into what into an XY plane, so when are we going to have tangent in this beam? Yeah, we are going to have our tangent at this point and our tangent at this point. So the place that we are going to have our tangent, let's name it our point A and our at us at point B. So what this thing means is that we are only considering the small portion of what of the beam. You understand like that. So in this case now, in this diagram that I have here, you can see that I have what point A and point B. That's not the entire length of the beam, but that is the part that we are considering. I hope <coughs> you understand. So in this case now, you can see that I said my ds, which is what length of the beam AB. That's the original length of the beam. My ds is what my original length of the beam. And I said that my C, this is my C, which is what center of the arc into which the beam has been bent. I hope you understand. And my alpha, which is what angle which the tangent A made with xx axis. This is our what xx axis. This is our what yy axis. So this was. <coughs> My tangent here at point A and at point B, the tangent at angle which the tangent B meet is what x x axis. So <clears throat> let's go to the work. Uh, from geometry, or uh, let me say from elementary algebra, we know that arc length is given by radius multiplied by the angle suspended. And if you look at in this case now. This is our what radius, understand? And this is the angle suspended. So, and our arc length is the same thing as what length of the beam, which is what our ds. So, in this case now, our arc length, which is what ds, equals what the radius, and the angle suspended, which is what the alpha, the alpha. I hope you understand until this point. So, if you are to make r, which is our radius, subject of the formula. We are going to have what the S, which is what the arc length over the angle suspended, which is what the alpha. So <clears throat> our next step here now is finding the reciprocal of this what equation. The reciprocal is what turning it upside down or dividing it all, all three by one. Then we are going to have what one over r. Then this one we go up since r has come down, which is what the alpha over what the S. I hope you understand up to this point. So we can call this one our equation one. But understand that what we are doing is what is in x and y plane. Understand what it means that <laughs> if you have to take what the relationship of the slope, which is what here will be what x because it is in what x axis and maybe what the y. So now if I'm to find, look here, we have alpha here, which is our angle suspended by the tangent. Understand. If we have to take this angle to this point now, we are going to have what another alpha. 
You understand like that? And the reason is that it is corresponding angle. So for me to find tan now, don't forget my tan is what opposite over adjacent. This is the angle here. This is the opposite. This is here facing the angle. And this is where is going to be my adjacent. It's going to be what my dy over my dx. So my tan alpha equals to what y over dx. Don't forget that alpha is the angle suspended by the tangent. So in this case now, since alpha is very small, since alpha is very small, we can say that alpha equals to what y over x. I hope you understand. Alpha is what y over dx. And our next line of action now is what to differentiate with respect to x. And let's see what it's going to give us. If you have to differentiate this now, differentiate with respect to x, we are going to have what the alpha over dx equals to this one is going to be our first degree of differentiation, which is what the square y over dx. I hope you understand as this one. You have already differentiated. So our next line now is that from equation one, you can see that one over r is the same thing as what the alpha over what s. Understand? So it's my word equation two. So but don't forget that what we are doing is what is in x and what x and y plus. So if you are looking at this diagram, you can see that we have what x axis and y axis. So this, let's say this is what I have. This is my what length of the beam. This is my x axis. This is my what the x. And this is my what y axis. This is what my dy. If we are to resolve this in x and y plane, that makes me when this is resolved in x axis, the s will be equal to what the x. I hope you understand. The s will be equal to the x. And if it's to be resolved in what y plane, the work, the s will be equal to what the y. So in this case now, I can say that the s will be equal to what the x when it is resolved in what in x axis. So from here now, in this case, I can say, example, from here is what the x over what the upper. And when I'm doing my reciprocal, it's what the upper over what the x. So equation one now can be written as what one over r, the upper over what over x. I hope you can continue from here. So from equation two, we have already established here that the alpha over the x equals to the square y over the x squared. But don't forget that our the alpha over the x is the same thing as what one over r. So if you have to substitute here now, you are going to have what one over r, which is what from here, which is what the alpha over the x here, which is going to be what the x the square y over what x squared. It's going to be what the square y over what x squared. I hope you understand. So after here now, we are going to take from our <laughs> moment of nature equation, which has already been established. We already have m over i equals to what e over r. So if I'm to make moment subject of the formula here, because in this uh, relationship that we are considering, the force is neglected. The only concern about the moment. So if we are to take moments now to be what e i multiplied by one over r, r is the radius, this is the young modulo, this is what second moment of what inertia. So in this case now, but don't forget we have already established that our one over r equals to what the square y over what the x squared. So if I'm to substitute this into this formula now, I'm going to have what m equals to what e i multiplied by what square y over what the x squared. This, this is the relationship that exists between what slope, radius of curvature, and deflection of the And don't forget that shear force is neglected in this case. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate